Now, in the last lesson, we captured, processed, and incorporated our tracking image into our Xcode project. And we added it to our configuration so that it knows what are the images that it should be detecting. Now, in this lesson, I want to show you how we can start recognizing those images using ARKit and how to turn the image into a plane that we're going to later use to set our 3D models on. So first things first, we're going to be working within the AR scene view delegate methods section, but we're going to delete all of these other methods because we're not going to be using it. Make sure you don't delete the last one because that's needed for the entire class. Now the method that we're going to add in here is called renderer node for anchor. And this one asks the delegate to provide a scene kit node corresponding to a newly added anchor. Now, if you remember from previous lessons, the anchor is the thing that was detected. So in our case, the anchor will be the image that got detected on screen. And the node is going to be a 3D object that we're going to provide in response to detecting the anchor. So that's basically what this method is all about. When the image gets detected, this method will get called and we can look at the image that got detected. And in response, we can provide a 3D object to be rendered into the screen. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create that brand new 3D object or what we call a SEN node. So this is our new node object. And once everything's all said and done, then we're going to return this node as the output of this method. As you can see, this method is expecting a output of SCN node, and it needs to send that back onto the scene so that it can render our 3D object. Now, in between these two lines of code is everything that we need to do to set up our plane and also render our 3D models. So first things first, we're going to check to see if the anchor that we detected, so if the item that was detected in the world was in fact an AR image anchor. So we're going to do a type check. So let's say let image anchor equal anchor. And that, of course, comes from here. And we're going to check if the data type is an AR image anchor. And this, of course, contains information about the position and orientation of an image detected in the AR session. If it detected, say, a plane or a point or anything else, then this is not going to carry out. In that case, we can use this with a if let to only carry out code if the anchor that was detected is in fact of data type AR image anchor. So it was in fact an image that got detected. Now, if that is true, then we're going to create a new plane using that image. And the plane is going to be created as we did before using SCN plane. And we're going to use the method that provides a width and a height. Now, this plane is going to be created from the image that was detected, so from our Pokemon card. And we want the width and height of the plane in the physical world to be the same as it is, right? So we want it to be exactly the size that our card is. Now, I can either provide in hard values that I've measured using a tape measure, or I can simply say, look at the image anchor that you found and look at the reference image that it contains and then get its physical size and grab the width property. That means that it's going to look at the image that it detected and try to measure its actual physical size and get all of its height and width properties to put in here instead of me having to hard code it. So once we've got a dimension to our plane, then we're going to use it to create a plane node. And this is going to be the 3D object that we're going to render just on top of our card so that we can tell that our card has been recognized. So the plane node is going to be an SCN node and it's going to be created with a geometry. And the geometry is, of course, this plane that we created over here. 
And now we can tap into this node that we created earlier on and we can add a child node, which is going to be our plane node. So now let's hit run and let's see what we get when we try to detect our card. When you run the app, you'll be asked to grant access to the camera so that we can start an AR session. And once it has, then we can reveal the face of our card, which is meant to be detected. And you can see that we're getting this plane that's being rendered on top of it. Now, the only problem with this plane is that it's being rendered vertically. Whereas what we actually want is for it to be lying down with the same dimension as our card. So in order to do that, we have to do a few transformations. Now, the transformation we need to make is to rotate this plane that we've created by 90 degrees anti-clockwise in the X axis. So here are our three axes, X, Y, and Z. And currently our card looks like this. So along the X axis, we're going to rotate it anti-clockwise. And to do that, all we have to do is to take the plane node and tap into the Euler angles, which is the node's orientation. And notice that it's expressed in radians. So that requires the use of pi. And the Euler angle that we're going to change is the X or the first component. And in order to rotate it anti-clockwise, then I'm going to make it negative. And the amount that I want to rotate it by is only 90 degrees. So in radians, that's expressed as pi divided by two. Half a pi is 90 degrees in radians. And you have to make sure that there's no space between the minus and the dot pi. Now you can also write pi as float dot pi, or you can simply use the shorthand way, which simply assumes that it's a float and we're tapping into the constant of pi. So now let's hit run again and see what happens this time. So now you can see that this plane that has been generated is now completely attached to the dimension of the card. And it is flush with the surface of the card. And this gives us a perfect place to start projecting 3D images onto and for 3D images to be tracked. Now, there's just one thing. Once we've got the plane show up, it's completely white and completely opaque. And we can't really see our card anymore, which means that I don't really know what was on the card. So it would be really nice if I can make this plane a little bit more transparent. So let's give that a go. Now, in order to make our plane transparent, before we set the geometry, we can set another one of its properties, which is its material and its diffuse. So we can say plane dot first material dot diffuse dot contents equals a UI color that is created using this method. These are the grayscale and the alpha values. So the grayscale, I'll leave it as completely white and the alpha, I'll change that to 0.5 so that it's half as transparent as it used to be. And let's try that out. So now you can see that the plane is rendered on top of my Pokemon card, but it's also transparent so that I can see through it into my actual card. So now we're at the position when we are ready to start rendering our 3D Eevee on top of this playing card and using that plane to track and render the 3D model and to move the 3D model as I move this physical card. That is what we're going to be learning in the next lesson. So for all of that and more, I'll see you there.